today's webinar. So good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Serena Scotton. I work uh, at Rina Consulting, which is a partner of the EcoFact uh, Consortium. So today, uh, as you can see uh, from uh, this slide, um, we organized this um, webinar to uh, give you some presentation about what we are doing in the EcoFact uh, project and dive a bit more into details about our innovative platform. Um, so this is the agenda for today's meeting. Um, so this uh, webinar will last around one hour and a half and uh, we will have uh, um, several presentation provided by the project partners and we will dive uh, and we will provide you some more details about our uh, digital twin platform, uh, some uh, details about what we're doing in uh, uh, the uh, pilot cases and uh, about the analytic hierarchy process. So um, it will be a, uh, a bit technical uh, event for today, but we will try to not make it boring to you and to make it very interesting and uh, to participate with you. So um, if you may have any questions uh, during the event, please drop your questions in the Q&A uh, channel. Um, the partners will uh, read your questions and we will address it right at the end of the event. Um, then if you uh, want to proceed and uh, let's say continue engaging with the speakers, you will see their emails in the presentation and we will share all the presentation and emails of the speakers right after the event. So you can continue engaging with us and follow up on the topics. So um, before uh, diving uh, into the today's agenda, in today's presentation, um, I want to show you um, some a very short um, video. So I need to stop sharing my screen again uh, about what the EcoFact project uh, is about, just to give you a sense on a more um, general level. Okay. So let's watch together this short video. In a world at the crossroads of environmental challenges and global climate crisis, we look to a future where industries actively contribute to a sustainable planet. Every individual and industry is called upon to take decisive action to safeguard our environment and secure a resilient future for generations to come. It is against this backdrop that Project EcoFact began its journey in 2020 under the European Union Horizon 2020 program. EcoFact is a call to action for forward-thinking companies to redefine their impact on the environment. More than just a platform, EcoFact is a novel green market approach enabling manufacturing industries to optimize the energy performance and environmental impact of their production systems in line with production constraints. The EcoFact platform includes, among different components, an energy and resource management system. This ERMS streams real-time data from the field so that managers can receive accurate information on an easy-to-understand digital twin platform. Having this information allows organizations to optimize their performance in terms of energy, resources and costs. As part of the application of EcoFact, four demonstration sites have committed to implementing different features of the initiative. Archelic uses EcoFact in its efforts to achieve its sustainability goals within the manufacturing of white goods. The Archelic Omi plant in Romania stands as a lighthouse of increased digitalization. It can apply machine learning and big data analysis to reduce energy consumption through intelligent and more optimized use of equipment. Archelic now uses smart meters to monitor energy consumption and expects important energy savings. Using EcoFact, Archelic is able to evaluate the integration of more sustainable materials in its products. Real-time environment upstream footprint information from selected suppliers is integrated into the factory's life cycle assessment calculations. In Thessaloniki, Greece, Athenian Brewery is working with EcoFact to reduce their electricity and gas consumption. Having access to real-time data analysis has allowed the brewery to make energy savings of around 25% in specific processes. EcoFact 
as a secure space for implementing machine learning models in the cloud. With Ecofact's platform, Athenium Brewery can deliver a more efficient and lean production process, resulting in less waste and less emissions. Guyon is committed more than ever to advancing the digitalization of its biscuits production processes, as well as the real-time monitoring of many of its facilities, largely driven by Ecofact in Aguileo del Campo, Spain. Valuable information related to life cycle costing and environmental and production impact of biscuits plays an important role in improving manufacturing processes. The implementation of manufacturing execution system, massive acquisition of energy-related data, and the ability to analyze and integrate this information are the driving forces behind this shift towards a more sustainable approach. For Tofast, Ecofact creates a real-time digital shadow offering end-to-end -end visibility across automotive production processes in Bursa, Turkey. Database decisions, analytics for energy projects, and simulations for future scenarios are technological advancements which allow TOFAS to strive towards a culture of continuous improvement. Outcomes from Ecofact's implementation include reductions in chemical use within the e-coat process, reduction in the use of paint, greater accuracy of paint processes, and important energy reductions. The experiences of these four demonstration companies reflect Ecofact's ability to impact companies and the wider community through their people, their energy use, the improvements in their processes and their overall impact on our environment. As we immerse ourselves in the transformative journey of Ecofact, we witness more than technological advancement. We see a commitment to a more sustainable and resilient future. Perfect. This was uh, um, a short video that we prepared as dissemination material, and I think it was useful to give just a bit of sense on a more broad level what we are doing in the Ecofat project. So without uh, further notice, I think we can officially start with the first presentation. Uh, so we'll ask uh, Juan Camilo to um, share your screen with your presentation. So Juan, uh, Juan will give us a presentation, an introduction about the Athenian um, brewery mass cooling. Um, so Athenian brewery, as you saw in the video, it is one of um, our um, demonstration cases that we have in uh, Thessaloniki in Greece. So Juan, please, the floor is yours. You can uh, share your screen. Uh, thank you, Serena, for your introduction. I... Can you see my screen right now? Uh, yes. Okay. Perfect, well, thank you. Thank you. Um, the objective of this presentation is give gave you um, an optimization of most cooling operation in the brewery. This is just a, a briefly introduction. So um, the first slide is about, um, this is the, sh the flow diagram the most cooling process. I'm going to explain just briefly the, the the process. My colleague Francisco give you more insight about this process. And basically this um, the most cooling process is um, have the objective of reduce the temperature of the world to 99 degrees uh, to 8 Celsius degrees in order to um, start the fermentation stage. In this process, we need two heat exchangers. The first one uses uh, water, tap water as a coolant, and the second heat exchanger uses a mix of ethanol with water as a refrigerant. Um, as um, do uh, the um, quality requirements we need to be done this process in one hour so this process needs to be uh, energy requirements and water consumption and because of this we apply the analytic hierarchy process to optimize based, uh, based on the methodology and with the integration of the digital tweet platform this is the this slide 
with this slide, I'm going to show you the relation between um, the, the, the most cooling process and the variables, uh, critical variables that depend on this uh, most cooling operation and the HEP module. Um, the variables that are critical in this process are the next ones. The first of all, the water set temperature of the water. The second one is the user water in the first uh, heat exchanger. And the third variable is energy requirements in the second heat exchanger. A different scenario was, was calculated based on the optimization. Uh, this this um, component is included into the digital tweet platform. My colleague Ricardo will explain these components more in detail in this uh, in in his uh, presentation. So those scenarios are evaluated with the application of various KPIs based on different criteria, the technical, environmental, and economic criteria. Uh, this calculation are done with the with the help of CIMA Pro software. CIMA Pro software is a tool that is often used to calculate environmental impacts of product and services. This, um, this software is integrated within the platform via API. So um, in combination with the user preference that I will explain uh, later more in detail, this, this process, this type of assignation, uh, the AGP algorithm that uh, means an analytic interactive process algorithm uh, uses those values, these, these KPI values based on the, the, the variables and the user preference based on the technical, economic and environmental criteria. We combine those values in the HP algorithm to find the the results, the score is the final result that gave us the possibility to choose the best scenario. The scenarios are linked with the user water consumption and energy requirements. So this, um, this analytic hierarchy process uh, help us to choose the best, to enhance the decision-making process. So this is the, the main relation between the, the most cooling process and the uses of the platform to improve the, to choose the, 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 the best scenario in, in conclusion. So thank you for your attention. I, I will give the floor to my colleague, uh, Francisco. Thank you very much, Camilo, for, for your introduction. And you see my screen, can you hear me well? Yes, sir. Okay, yes. thank you very much. So. So, good morning, everybody. My name is Francisco Morentin. As I work in Cartif, the, I'm in this I'm the Ecopath project coordinator, and I'm going to try to give you a technical description of of the masculine process. Uh, let's start firstly with a generic description of the of the masculine process, and then we will uh, focus on the specific implementation that happens in in our uh, the most Athenian Brewery demonstrator in the project. So without more delay. 
Francisco, sorry, we don't see it in presentation I'm mode. I'm so sorry. Uh, that's, that was, was, was afraid. Okay, now it's in presented mode, okay? Sorry, yes. apologies. No problem. Okay, thank you. So, um, masculine process, okay? So, masculine process is uh, typical standard stage or step in, 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 in breweries, in, manuf in beer manufacturing. It happens immediately after boiling the wort. And the, the worth once the boiling stage is step is finished must be immediately cooled uh, uh, before moving to the next step, which is the fermentation, which requires the yeast addition and requires the uh, worth to be cooled down, typically from let's say 95 degrees to any possible value between five to ten degrees. Okay, it's a in in our the most in our case is a batch process, so you have a batch of of work that must be cooled, but it will be not big difference for our methodology if instead of a batch process it would be a continuous process. And it's a this cooling process and the architecture required is quite common in, in other food factories like uh, pasteurized milk or food plots or any kind of uh, food uh, industries. What would you first boil the the ingredients and then you immediately have to cool them down? Okay. The common architecture in in these uh, cooling systems usually is uh, two heat exchangers connected in series. Okay, because remember we have to reduce the temperature from let's say 95, 98 degrees to any value between five to ten degrees. So it's a high jump in terms of, of uh, temperature drop, okay? And typically, the first heat exchanger is going to use water at ambient temperature as coolant, as refrigerant, and it's going to reduce the work temperature from this initial almost boiling temperature, uh, boiling point temperature to any value between, let's say, 20 to 30 degrees, okay? And after that, uh, connected in series, so at the output, the outlet of the first heat exchanger is connected to the inlet of the second heat exchanger. We go into a second heat exchanger that typically uses uh, a mix of ethanol or water, or sometimes uh, glycol, but uh, glycol and water present some security issues in terms of uh, food se security, typically with sub-zero temperatures as coolant, and this second heat exchanger is going to implement the final uh, temperature reduction of the world until the target value. So once mentioned that, as uh, the Juan already presented, this is going to be the uh, schematic diagram of, of the system implemented in, in our uh, demo use case. Okay, so the, in yellow, you can see in the in the dotted yellow area, you can see the first heat exchanger. In blue, uh, you can see in dotted blue area, you can see the second heat exchanger. We'll talk about then step by step. And we also have in, in red an additional component, which is the integration of the, you know, of the cooling plant that uh, generates the mix of ethanol and water at sub-zero temperatures that in, uh, you know, allows the second heat exchanger to perform this cooling. In this case, uh, the connection of, of this um, ethanol inlet is not uh, a one by one connection. It's uh, use also, it also in, in, includes some kind of buffer that we'll talk about it uh, later. Okay. So, focusing on the first heat exchanger, the first heat exchanger uh, uses water at, at ambient temperature which means it will be different in the summer and in the winter. Temperature can range between 15 to 25 or between 10 to 20. It depends on, on the locations. It, it depends on, on uh, what you have uh, previously done with this supply of, of, coal, of ambient temperature. Okay, And it's going to pass through the heat exchanger and absorb the heat from the uh, hot work inlet, okay? And 
this heated water you pro you obtain at the output of the first heat exchanger is not going to be discarded. It's going to be stored in a heated water tank to be used later for um, cleaning purposes or whatever other purposes are, are can be useful for this uh, hot water. Okay. Uh, important point here is that um, the workflow value is going to be constant. Typically, uh, it's fixed by the quality requirements where, where you only have one hour to process to process all your batch of work. So if you have 85 cubic meters of, of work to be processed in one hour, this means your, your flow is going to be 85 cubic meters per hour, OK? which is a typical value. And um, other important point here, but it's not so critical, it's just a control issue, okay, is that in this case, the control system, instead of controlling, fixing a set point for the temperature of the worth outlet at the first heat exchanger, is going to fix a temperature set point for the outlet of the hot water, okay? so. The control of the world outlet temperature is not made directly. It's made in, the, in, the, in an indirect way through the control of the um, temperature of the of the hot water outlet. Okay. Going into the second heat exchanger, again, most of it was already mentioned. It uses a mix of ethanol and water as, as refrigerant and implements the final um, uh, uh, cooling of, of, of the world. There is a, an, a, an automatic control loop that uh, is constantly measuring the outlet temperature of the heat exchanger of the second heat exchanger and adjusting the flow values of the ethanol inlet in order to uh, control that the cooling is uh, being performed at the right temperatures. Okay, um, we will talk about it immediately. But um, the the temperature of the ethanol that enters the he second heat exchanger is not going to be constant because there is not a direct connection between the cooling plant and the second heat exchanger. The connection is goes through a sixty cubic meter buffer and this. Uh, change a little bit the control strategies. It's, again, it's not a critical issue. It's something that has to be included, uh, considered in the, in the control loops. And also important, because when you make the energy models, you have to include into the energy models the control strategies. And you have to, to, to know the definition of them, but not so critical. As mentioned before, the, this buffer tank is strictly not required element. So we could find another implementation in other factories where they do not use this kind of buffer, okay, that they have a direct connection one to one from the cooling plant to the second heat exchanger. But uh, the the advantage of this strategy of this architecture, let's say, is that um, since you have a, a previously charged with Coal ethanol with chilled ethanol, this tank, you reduce the peak power required in the cooling plant during this cooling process. Let, let's remember this process is very energy intensive and, and only lasts for one hour. So uh, if you do not use, use uh, some kind of buffer, you have to somehow oversize the cooling plant. Or if you do not oversize the cooling plant and the cooling plant is centralized for the whole factory, then you have the risk of uh, let's somehow collapsing the cooling plant during this um, energy intensive process. During the cooling, during the duration of this one hour cooling batch, uh, you could, uh, you know, overcharge the, the, the refrigeration capacity of the, of the centralized cooling plant. And with this buffer, uh, this mix of uh, previously uh, cooled, uh, buffer, you, you reduce this risk. So it's it, this architecture has both advantages and disadvantages. OK, so again, the, the key parameter, OK, and it's the key parameter because it's one of the few parameters that the operators can uh, modify 
at their free will in every operation in any batch is going to be the water temperature set point that remember is an in, is the parameter that you use to i in to implement the indirect control of the um, uh, performance of the first heat exchanger the temperature reducing redu reduction producing the first heat exchanger so what happens if you establish a high water temperature set point if you establish a high water temperature set point you will have low water flow through the heat first heat exchanger which means you will have less water consumption but at the end also at the same time you will have lower cooling performance in the first heat exchanger okay and this obviously since both are connected in series will require higher cooling in the second heat exchanger which means higher thermal energy higher electricity associated electricity consumption in the first in the sorry in the second heat exchanger okay so that would be if you select higher water temperature set point what happens if you select a lower water temperature set point you will have the opposite situation you will have higher water flow through the heat exchanger higher water consumption higher cooling performance in the first heat exchanger and lower uh, cooling lower thermal energy and electric energy in the second heat exchanger so you have to choose you increase your water consumption and reduce your thermal and electric consumption in the second heat exchanger or the other way okay you you cannot optimize both optimizing one is going to make worse the other one optimizing the first one is going to uh, you know go reduce the optimization in the second one in the second heat exchanger i mean so it will be explained much later by by by, by Juan, but um, the idea here is that um, a, assign or create what we're going to call scenarios depending for each possible value of this water temperature set point. Because depending on the on the temperature water set point that you establish, you will have a different value of the final temperature of the heated water water tank you will have a final volume of the water consumed you will have a, a different value of the heat dissipated in the first heat exchanger and also you will have as a different value of the heat dissipated in the second heat exchanger and remember that the heat dissipated in the second heat exchanger corresponds to an electrical consumption okay because it uses uh, ethanol and water as refrigerant and this ethanol and water refrigerant flow has an associated electricity consumption so that's more or less so what happens if you select uh, two values for this water temperature set point too high or too low basically what happens is that uh, you you go outside of the um, you know of the realistic operation of the systems and uh, the control you 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 go beyond the limits the operation limits of the system if you select a too high water temperature set point um, you will have a very reduced uh, water consumption in the first heat exchanger but probably the second heat exchanger will not be able to implement the required cooling and the worth final temperature at the end of the second heat exchanger will not achieve the required uh, quality requirements okay the other way if you selected a too low water temperature set point um, it means that you will require a water flow quite large and at the end you you may reach the maximum water flow provided by the pumps so you go beyond the operation limits of the system and the system is not going to be able to operate beyond uh, these limits just to finish um these are the typical values so one the worth value the batch size to be cool is say more or less 85 cubic meters the worth flow value is 85 cubic meters per hour because the work batch cycle is one hour the initial temperature is typically 99 degrees the work temperature cooling set point at the end can be any value between 5 and 10 but we are going to consider 8 degrees the treated uh, cold water temperature is constant during the batch it's going to be considered 15 degrees but it's not constant during the year it's not going to be the same value in winter that in summer 
and the ethanol coming from the cooling plant comes at minus 4.5 degrees and the ethanol in uh, previously stored in the ethanol buffer tank it's also at minus 4 0.5 degrees and with that values we establish different uh, temperature set point water temperature set points in any possible values and that creates what uh, Juan will explain as um, a scenario so to recap 85 cubic meters of water to be cooled in one hour from 99 degrees to 8 degrees the numbers in a quick calculation indicates that you are going to be it's going to be required 8.5 megawatt hours of total refrigeration energy in one hour so it's it's going to be the same if we want to talk in terms of energy or in terms of power the first heat exchanger will provide between 7.5 and 7 and the second heat exchanger will provide between 1 and 1.5 megawatts hour of cooling refrigeration depending if we are in the maximum water consumption or in the minimum water consumption or that's will be explained much better by, by my colleague in any possible intermediate value but these are the boundaries and the global explanation of uh, the of the system and that's all from my side sorry i think i overflow a little bit my my time slot apologies no but... problem <laughs> No problem. Thanks, Francisco. <laughs> so we can uh, uh, proceed with the next presentation uh, where we'll discuss about the demonstration of the digital twin platform process. So, Ricardo, the floor is yours. Thank you, Serena. Thank you, Francisco. Okay. You should be able to see my screen in presentation mode. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Now I am focusing on the software part of the masculine system, specifically the masculine system is uh, uh, can be managed in terms of simulation and optimization from the digital twin platform and specifically using two tools which are called energy simulator and optimizator. Well, the digital twin platform is also called uh, the Ecofact Energy and Research Management System. In terms of uh, okay, in terms of uh, Ecofact approach, uh, uh, I would like to introduce you to the four ecofact uh, layers at the field level we have uh, the sensors of the ecofact uh, factories including athenium rover in the saloniki then uh, at the hedge control level we have the local data acquisition systems uh, that are gathering data from different sources like sensors plc scada and so on the data broker layer features the data broker component, which is uh, cleaning, harmonizing, and storing the monitoring data. It uh, then shares this data in uh, real time or as uh, historical data to the higher application and services. The main component of this uh, application and services is the Ecofact user interface or dashboard, um, which includes uh, a an LCA and LCC module with uh, a dynamic LCA and LCC approach based on CIMA Pro and a supply chain collaboration service. The energy research management system module is the digital twin platform based on Autodesk platform services and it includes industrial digital twin models of production lines and machines joined by a wide set a wide range of simulation and optimization tools both the ERMS and the LCA and the LCC modules are communicating with the holistic decision support system which is giving real-time alerts and suggestions to end-users. 
both the data broker layer and the applications and services make up uh, the Ecofact platform. Focusing on the digital twin platform, it consists of a web environment based on Autos platform services and working as Ecofact Energy Research Management System. These are its three main uh, modules. The monitoring module uh, includes 3D models of production lines and machines uh, with sensor details included uh, that make these 3D models IoT, Industrial Internet of Things, enable the digital twins to monitor energy and resource consumptions. Uh, these models are accessible through the APS viewer, the Autodesk viewer, and are stored in the Autodesk buckets. The second part is the simulation and optimization set of tools, where the energy simulator and optimizer of the Athenian Brewery Masculine system is included as well. Uh, the tools can be run by production managers and industrial operators to better manage energy resources and costs uh, of the factory. Output graphics and reports or results are shown in the Digital Twin platform and in some cases within the Autodesk Viewer with the Digital Twin model. The data exchange uh, layer includes uh, many APIs, as you can see, and these APIs are making the Digital Twin platform extremely interoperable. Um, in this slide, I want just to tell you that uh, the Digital Twin platform features an administration section where the manager can manage users, user groups, and permissions. Instead, the screenshot below is a list of documents, just to say that we also have a section for the documents which are uh, related with digital twin models and the simulation and optimization tools. Um, in this slide, you can see on the left uh, a couple of screenshots taken from the Autodesk viewer where we have a production line with a sensor list on the right. Sensors are grouped by the type of uh, parameter and uh, can be expanded. These groups can be expanded to see the specific uh, sensors. Below, you can see the screenshot uh, um, of how we are providing monitoring real-time data to the end users. On the right, you can see that we have seven different uh, simulation and optimization tools. Some of them are providing, as you can see uh, on top, uh, uh, extremely good results and I want to tell you that the energy flexibility as production optimizer, the predictive maintenance, the industrial energy integration by product which is written as uh, IED by P and the energy simulation and optimizer, simulator and optimizer are specific for Athenian brewery, not only for Athenian brewery but they are operational in Athenian Brewery. The simulator and optimizer is based on transis and uh, is working for the masculine system. Now, uh, with this slide, you can see a graphical user interface developed by one team where the industrial staff can upload input data regarding the masculine system in order to carry out a simulation. Uh, default field values are available but can be changed by industrial operators within fixed ranges. There is an identical uh, graphical user interface for the optimizer version of the tool, but with a slight difference. The parameter that you can see in the red rectangle, which is the set point of the heat exchanger one outlet water temperature is in fact replaced by two uh, parameters, which are a minimum temperature and a maximum temperature. Uh, if you, for example, set 
up a minimum temperature of 75 degrees and a maximum temperature of 82 degrees, it means that the optimizer will perform eight simulation runs, as many as the temperatures included within this minimum and maximum temperature interval. These are the first two outputs provided by the Digital Twin platform in the Masculine Systems Simulator tool. It is transis based and those outputs are referring to the hot water tank, the first heat exchanger, the heated water tank, the ethanol buffer tank, the second heat exchanger and the chilled water tank. They are uh, um, charts uh, whose simulation runs over a two hour time horizon. And all the simulations are stored in the Digital Twin Platform MySQL database. Focusing um, on, these, on these two charts, uh, on the epsilon axis, you have temperature and volume on the left. and uh, the flow on the right. While the first graphic has, has uh, uh, monitoring lines, volume, flow and temperature, the second has uh, a, a, the simulation of four different temperatures and two flows. In the second, Okay, in this second slide of uh, simulator outputs, uh, um, we have on top left and below on the right, uh, temperature, volume, and flow rate as uh, uh, simulation lines. Instead, uh, on top right, uh, we have four temperatures and two flows, and below on the left, uh, three temperatures and one flow. In these four graphics, we have temperature on the epsilon axis on the left and flow on the right. Well, focusing on the optimizator version of the tool, the Digital Twin platform is generating a raw CSV file with optimized electricity and water values identified, but it is a this is not uh, extremely interesting. Uh, the nice part that we developed is that this file is uh, sent, this file which is generated by the Masculine Systems Optimizer tool, is sent by the Digital Twin platform in JSON format through Kafka, which is the methodology that we are leveraging in Ecofact for real-time data sharing via data broker to other software components. Specifically, it becomes input of the AHP algorithms. And the screenshot that you are seeing uh, is taken from the main Ecofact user interface of dashboard. From this interface, the industrial staff uh, can configure the AHP algorithms before running them. Basically, the operator can set up some preference weights for the masculine system to consider additional economical, technical, and environmental assessments. In the process, the CIMA Pro APIs are also called. The results generated by um, this process are received by the Digital Twin platform and shown as a suggestion on the Masculine Systems Optimizator interface for the industrial staff. It looks complex, but it isn't uh, because the first table is displaying uh, some data and specifically the first data is the water final set temperature. Therefore, uh, if you remember my example in the beginning, if the operator sets up a minimum temperature of 75 degrees and a maximum uh, set temperature of 82 degrees, it will see um, water 
final set temperatures between 75 and 82 degrees. Therefore, you will have as many simulation lines, as many uh, temperatures. Um, outputs, the, this suggestion also include two simulated consumptions that can be uh, seen and seven environmental parameters. The most important data that you can see in the first table is the AHP score, which is determining the two best simulations carried out by the optimizer, and they are reported in bold. Instead, the worst simulations that cannot be taken into account to optimize the masculine systems, the masculine system are in red. The second table. Uh, just uh, shows uh, um, the industrial operators preference weights that were chosen in the HP configuration. With this slide, I want to tell you that uh, the same interface with the suggestion tables that you saw in the previous slide is also available into the main Ecofact uh, UI or dashboard. In fact, all the digital twin platform functionalities, even if they can work standalone, they are available into this Ecofact user interface of dashboard through specific iframes. And this is giving, of course, uh, managers and uh, industrial operators just one single and integrated digital environment to manage not only the masculine system, but all the uh, industrial processes of the factory. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ricardo. So thank you for your presentation. So let's move with the um, second session. So um, we will discuss now about the um, analytic hierarchy process. And I see that uh, Juan already shared his screen. So, um, Juan, the floor is yours. If you can put in presentation mode, it would be perfect. Thank you, Serena, for the introduction. Can you see the screen uh, right now? Yes, yes, now yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's continue the presentation. I am Juan Camilo Serna from Circe. Uh, now I'm going to introduce the HEP introduction concept. Um, as I mentioned before by Ricardo, this analytical hierarchical process is a methodology developed by Thomas Satie in the 1970s. This is a structured technique for organizing and analyzing complex decision, in this case, in the most cooling process, to decompose the problem into different criteria and KPIs to select the, the best scenario. And the, the main objective of this um, methodology is the, the, um, it helps to set, prioritize and make decision through a pairwise comparison and synthesizing the results in summary. This is the general uh, representation of the, the main steps that we need to take to to follow for complete this methodology firstly we want, we have to define the problem in this case is optimize the musculine operation process this problem is broken down or it depends of um, main variables energy requirements uh, and water consumption in for instance in this case this criteria depends of the technical or uh, environmental and economic uh, criteria and we in the second step we structure this hierarchy based on this criteria and sub criteria that means uh, the different kpis associated with the with the the main three criteria described before. The, two, the, the next step is the pairwise comparison. As you, you see in the screen in the presentation of explained by Ricardo, we, 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 we have the 
the the platform with the with the um, with the different values of of the criteria and and the user has the possibility to assign the different value depending of the of the methodology described by by Sati. I I'm going to explain that that detail later. How we compare how we compare those values and how to choose the the best um, the best KPI based on the on the situation. Um, then the next step is calculate the weights. This is the um, a consequence of the previous steps. We we the pairwise comparison is to select the the dominant criteria in this case. The next step is just a consistent check to ensure the the quality of the comparison and the consistency. And the next the the synthesized this this methodology um, gave us the possibility to synthesize in the results because we decompose a problem into the criteria and we calculate different um, weights to um, to to choose finally the 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 best decision fits in our preference. This is the general. Uh, the graphic representation of the method methodology. The criteria in this case is the technical, environmental and economic criteria. Based on this criteria, we have different KPIs associated with this criteria that need to be compared between each other to, to um, calculate or find the alternatives. These alternatives is the scenarios that we uh, commented before. And those scenarios um, are important to select the, the best one based on in our preference. Uh, continuing with the HAP um, methodology, the pairwise comparison described before is uh, evaluated according to that scale of importance described by SATI. And we assign the different numerical values according to the pairwise comparison if two criteria or, or two sub-criteria are equally important. We assign one if a model if one is more important than the other ones, we assign the number depending of the the degree of importance of of each one. And we have the this matrix, this matrix um, allows us to compare the different criteria and sub criteria. And this is the calculation that are behind of the of the digital twin platform shown by uh, Ricardo previously. Um, this is the results based on the analysis within this uh, muscling process. The, the dominant criteria that is dominance over the economic and environmental the weight calculated by, by this criteria is 88%. The sub criteria that are taken into account into this criteria are direct electricity, consumption in production, water consumption manufacturing, and community energy demand. Those are KPIs calculated with the help of CIMA Pro API with, uh, into the platform. We compare the different um, KPIs between each other and we calculate the weight of the, based on the page wise comparison explained here before, and we calculate these numbers. The final, the, we, do, we do that to calculate the, the specific weight of each KPI 
because our analysis is based on the different KPIs according to 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 this, this the different scenarios proposed. Um, and the part of economical, we have uh, we evaluate total life cycle cost values and environmental prices based on that energy energy consumption and water um, and water volume user in the first heat exchanger. We calculate this these weights according to the base weight comparison. And finally, the environmental impact, uh, the KPI that I take into account in this case is environmental footprint to uh, based on the simple, single score. This method gave us the, the environmental impacts about the, the water consumption and the um, energy requirements for, for this most cooling process. And uh, for associate the the steps that we 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 follow for for this analysis, we I'm going to explain the the main steps that we follow for for these calculations. Uh, firstly, based on the scenarios, different KPIs are calculated. These are calculated with the help of Sima Pro. Uh, tool, as I mentioned before, this is the three first KPIs are the technical, cumulative energy demand, water consumption, and direct electricity production in, in is calculated. Um, total LCC cost, environmental prices that are part of the economic criteria are calculated as well. In, in this case, um, an environmental footprint in the case of um, the, the inputs in associated with the different scenarios. Um, the second step is normalize values. We normalize those values according to the respect to the maximum values um, of each um, KPI. And we we obtain the these these values, and the third step is combine those um, weights that depends of the page wise comparison and the normalized values to obtain the the final score for this for this analysis. And this gave us um, the general results. This that is here, as I mentioned, uh, Ricardo in in his presentation. We with this methodology, we calculate the best scenario based on this methodology in the analytical hierarchy uh, process. Um, the best scenario in this case is the third one. In this case, the the maximum score associated with the with the combination of the, those KPIs selected um, are here in this table. And in summary, this this methodology help to break break down the problem into various KPIs in the different criteria and enhance the decision-making process in order to to facilitate the the selection of the best scenario based on the, the criteria described before so this is this is one of the use case and if you if we have any comments about this uh, methodology uh, are we happy to to answer that. Thank you. Thank you, Juan. Um, OK, you can uh, stop sharing your screen. So I think we um, finished all the uh, presentations for SIM for today. 
Um, I don't see yet any questions in the chat. Um, so I invite the participants, if you may have any questions, you can um, uh, type them in the chat because I don't think uh, um, as participants you can uh, unmute yourself. I see someone is uh, writing. Uh, in the meantime, so um, till the participants maybe think of some questions, if they may have one. Um, one question for the speakers. Do you um, have anything that maybe uh, popped, up, uh, popped up in your mind or you want to clarify before closing the event? Maybe do the speakers have any comments to add? Hello, do you hear me? Yes. Okay. I have one one comment that uh, you know uh, it was sometimes mentioned uh, to me, mm -hmm. you know, during the previous these years, you know, implementing these uh, methodologies and you know, especially when you talk about it with, you know, with factory managers, with maintenance managers in the factories, and and said, okay, it, it's not so common that a factory has got uh, two or three or eight possible ways of producing some kind of process or product or, or something like that. Typically, um, typically uh, you, you only have, even if you have uh, two or three of different ways of, you know, producing your products, let's say, um, usually there is one, uh, you know, critical um, parameter that, you know, decides or makes the factory to to go for that way typically is the economic cost of course i mean uh, but um and 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 the, the the idea is that once you go for one way of producing uh, in in your factory you usually don't have uh, two or three ways but this methodology can also be used or could be useful um in the design in the in the design in uh, of of a new uh, manufacturing uh, process okay because uh, when when you are you know thinking or considering how you are going to implement a new line a new factory maybe this is also a, a good opportunity to, to 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 take into decision not only the economic criteria but also saying okay i have two possible options of you know implementing the production of, of whatever uh, in terms of economic there are not so big differences because if let's be honest if there are important uh, difference in in the economic uh, way of in, in the economic indicators the discussion is going to be quite short but uh, in terms let's let's guess in in terms of economic in kpis there are not so big differences and and this methodology allow you you to 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 compare um at the same time also uh, other indicators like uh, environmental or energy related aspects that that was my 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 comment thank you francisco um in the meantime uh, we received one question in the chat so i refer this to the entire panel if the um, data sets that uh, um, we are using for the analysis are also available, uh, publicly available, and we can share it. Well, we can we can consider it, but uh, please be aware that the data sets that are used for the HP analysis are um, um, simulation results, okay? It's mm -hmm. not, um, so, you, you, the first step is you go into the, as Ricardo explained, you go into the digital twin platform, you go into the into the optimizer, you select the let's say the minimum the range for simulation. Okay, I want to make uh, five values or eight values or ten or twelve values for simulation, and and the the system runs these twelve simulations, and with these twelve simulations generate the 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 files that are uh, the input for the next step for the HP. So the HP in this implementation is not fit with a monitoring database. It's fit with a simulation uh, database. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Mm, the participants just uh, thank you for your clarification. Um, okay, I don't see any uh, further questions or comments in the chat, so maybe our presentation were enough clear. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, as um, also Edurne uh, is typing in the chat, um, if you're interested to, know, interested to know more about the project or you want to follow up with us, um, Ecofact has a project website, so you can easily find it on um, Google. And we're also on uh, LinkedIn, Twitter and YouTube. Um, and as I said, we will share the presentation and the video recording on the website and with UVA email, so you can follow up uh, uh, with the speakers and uh, um, you can follow up uh, with the ECOFACT project. Uh, I see that one attendee is still uh, writing, so I just want to check if it's a question or just maybe not. While, while this user writes uh, one additional comment related yes, with them with the simulator and the optimizer uh, obviously the optimizer just gives you a summary of the key parameters the energy the water the you know the the final mm -hmm. values but in the opti in the optimizer sorry in the simulator as was shown by ricardo you can see the time evolution during this typically one hour uh, batch cycle so you can see the evolution of the temperatures of the flow of the values and um, obviously it goes out uh, the, the scope of this presentation but if you uh, the 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 utility of of this uh, functionality is when when you push the system to its uh, to the border of its operational limits and uh, you want to know how for instance, for how long is the system going to be able to perform the required cooling? So I go to the limits of the system. Remember, if you remember well, there is a buffer of ethanol in the system. So at the very beginning of the batch, everything works fine. But uh, as long as minutes go passing through, this buffer run out of, of cool, increases its temperature, and the temperature of all the system starts to increase. And if you go to farther the limit of the system the you you may reach when when the system is not able to perform the required cooling so with this um with this uh, simulation tool the operators can also uh, know uh, when the system is going to uh, stop being able to achieve the required cooling because uh, that's also a useful information uh, because remember, in this type of factories, usually the the cold generation uh, facility, the cold generation uh, machinery is centralized for all the factories. And, and maybe uh, you cannot have available all the cooling, you know, cold generation in the next uh, 13 minutes. But you know that after 13 minutes, you are going to have it because another process is going to stop in 13 minutes so you you take advantage of that because the, the you know the simulation tool, tool tells you that uh, for instance you are going to be able to perform the cooling during 45 minutes and only in the last 15 minutes of the of the of the batch the system is not going to be able to implement it so um but uh, you you run the simulation you have that confirmation and since you only have uh, problems in the first 13 minutes when when these 13 minutes finish you readjust the system since now the centralized cooling power plant is available is is let's say is fully available is not uh, uh, have to be said anymore and you you change that but that's out of the scope because that could be a practical uh, you know uh, use of the system in terms of uh, factory operators not in terms of the uh, hp methodology we are we are explaining in 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 this presentation thank you francisco mm -hmm. thank you so i think we can uh, um close here the event uh, mm -hmm. There are no further comments uh, um, and questions. So 
thank you all, um, both the speakers and the participants. Um, so we will stay uh, in touch with the material that will be shared in the upcoming days. So thank you all. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.